Hey YouTube. Now I just thought I'd share with you um, my last couple of days of experience with the Motorola MTH850. Um, we've been using these radios for the past couple of days and um, I just thought I'd share some of my uh, my opinions with you. Now uh, as you can see it looks pretty much like a standard walkie talkie. Um, you got your color screen here, uh, your keypad down here, um, you've got your push to talk button which is this one here. The green button here on this radio is programmed to turn the backlight on, back, back light on for the uh, keyboard and the screen. Uh, this button down here isn't currently programmed to do anything on mine, um, but you, obviously you can program that button to, uh, to switch channels maybe or to end a call. On the top of the radio you can see uh, on the far left hand side is the volume control. Now a lot of people get this button confused with uh, channel selectors. They think that this button changes the channel of the radio. Um, it doesn't. It just controls the volume of the audio. Now the button to the right of that one, which is this one here, is the emergency signaling button. Um, and to the right of that is the GPS uh, antenna slash um, radio antenna. Um, this one here, I don't know if you can see that there, actually does say GPS on it. Um, that's just um, the uh, GPS receiver and also obviously the uh, antenna for the radio built into one. Now I'll just show you guys very quickly the uh, the screen just so, so you can see what's going on. Um, I'll just light it up for you. So as you can see, top left hand corner of the screen is the signal. Now this works pretty much the same way as it does on a mobile phone. So anytime that uh, you're within network coverage, uh, you'll be able to see up here on the on the left hand side, obviously how many uh, how many bars you have. Um, obviously that relates to signal strength exactly the same as a uh, as a mobile phone. Um, the uh, little bell symbol in the center there that means that the radio is currently in um, ring and uh, vibrate mode at the moment. Um, so anytime the any a uh, call comes in or someone transmits to our call group or to me directly, the uh, the radio will also beep and vibrate as well. And the uh, top right is the battery indicator, which looks a little low at the moment. Now, in the uh, center of the screen, uh, where it says Xeon Digital, that is the name of the network we're using. Below that, um, BTW is what's called a folder. A folder is basically a set of uh, call groups. Um, so you can have a number of different call groups within a, uh, a folder. Um, below that is the actual channel that I'm currently on, which is BTW Demo 05. And the number below that, 816, is actually the uh, the radio model number or the radio number. That's the, the ID of the radio. And obviously below that is the date and time, which is actually incorrect. Um, it's actually 11.43 p.m. Um, and below that, of course, you can see um, options, um, the menu button, and contacts too. So um, what is the radio like to use? Well, we've been using it for the last couple of days now. Um, I must say I do love some other features of it and I really do dislike some other features about it. Now I've been using um, analog radio for some time now so I've been using the old Motorola GP type systems with repeaters. Um, so I mean just to demonstrate some of the features straight off, so you, your standard push to talk feature. So here's your push to talk button at the side here. It's just a standard, um, what's well, probably about an inch wide uh, button that you can press here on the side. So when you press that button, I'll just light the screen up so you can see what it's like before. So when you hit the button, you can see the radio um, plays a tone and then you're free to transmit. Um, whilst we're just in this mode, I'll just explain what's on the screen there as well. On the top left hand corner of the screen, you can see that this is like a signal bar. Um, bear in mind that these radios work a little bit like mobile phones in that they do rely on the infrastructure um, that's around. They don't actually talk direct to each other. Um, now, I know other MTH 850 radios do talk directly. They can run in a mode called DMO mode, which means um, direct mode operation. Um, these actual particular radios, because they're um, locked to the Xeon Digital Network, you cannot run these in DMO mode. You can only use these in trunked mode, which is TMO mode. What that basically means is it works exactly the same as a, um, as a mobile phone. So you're using the network's infrastructure to make radio calls between radios and also to mobile phones or to PSTN lines. So any time that you want to use the radio, you have to check to ensure that signal bar in the top left hand corner has at least one bar. 
if it doesn't have one bar, you won't be able to make any radio calls whatsoever. Even if you have another radio that stood 10 feet away from you, you won't be able to radio to it. Um, that is one of the slightly annoying features of the Xeon Digital Network. They don't allow DMO mode. Um, so, I mean, if you were looking at having this system, just ensure that you do have coverage of, of the network, first of all, before you go spending your money. Um, that's one other thing I want to talk to, to you about as well, is coverage issues. Now, we were using these radios both inside and outside of buildings. We were using them in the streets, we were using them on, on top-level buildings, we were also using them in basements. One thing I will say is the coverage isn't fair in, in most places. You can be walking down a street and all of a sudden you'll have no coverage, um, and then 10 meters away from that spot you'll have full signal. Um, the coverage is very patchy, especially in buildings as well. I found that just going into a shop on the side of a street um, and I'd lose my signal straight away. One of the main problems I had with this radio is the talk permit tone. Now anytime you want to, want to broadcast, you hold down the push to talk button and you, and you hear that tone. That tone basically means, okay, go ahead, you're free to talk. The problem is, is that half the time when you want to talk, that tone doesn't appear. So you press the push to talk button, and then on the screen, all you see is just, please wait. If, I mean, at the moment, it's clear. So you can see the second I push push to talk, it says, um, group and use, which means, which means I'm free, I'm free to, to broadcast over that channel. A lot of what I was finding though when I was walking on the streets was that I'd go to push, push to talk and all that would happen is the radio would beep at me and it would say please wait while I see it was trying to connect to the uh, to the network. Um, also what I found as well is walking on the street I'd, be, I'd push the button, I'd get my push to talk tone, I'd talk for maybe 10-15 seconds and all of a sudden my radio would start beeping at me telling me I had no network coverage all of a sudden. So my call, my, my radio call would just drop all of a sudden. I will say that the audio quality is amazing. It's very, very clear. Um, again, though, it's very clear when you can hear the person. If you haven't got a very good signal, um, I'm sure you're aware of the pitfalls of digital. If you haven't got a signal or you've got a very poor signal, you just won't hear them at all. So it's either good or it's very bad. It's, it's, it's nowhere, it's not in the middle. And one of the, obviously the main things as well around the uh, Sydney CBD is you don't get any coverage in any of the train tunnels or basements of buildings either, um, which could be a real big problem depending on what you're using the radios for. If you're a courier or you're always outside, no problems at all. This system will work flawlessly for you. For us though, um, we're always inside of buildings, we're sometimes in basements and lifts, not so good, not so good. I wouldn't, I really wouldn't recommend it for that. Um, so, I mean, as a whole, the radio itself is built very solidly. It, it does feel very strong. I, I don't have any any concerns about the way it's built. It does feel very solid. Um, I would necessarily like this push to talk um, sound, this permit to uh, talk sound, to be a little bit louder. It does. I mean, I have the volume. What have I got it on at the moment? It's on 14 at the moment, so it's on max. I'll just turn it up there. So that's on max at the moment. Um, but that push to talk noise isn't very loud. And when you're in a very loud environment, you can't hear what's going on. It's awful. And, you, and you're kind of looking at the radio going, can I talk? Can I not talk? Is it OK or not? So that can be a little bit confusing. Um, also, the Roger beep on these as well, um, it isn't so loud. Um, when you're communicating with, with other radios, um, it does send a beep at the end of every message to say that you've finished um, transmitting, but a lot of the times it isn't very clear, so it is hard to hear that. Um, so it can be a little bit confusing as to, as to when the other person has stopped talking.